thank you all for joining us today for our webinar, our car seat manufacturer update. And today we have Kids Embrace on the line and we're really excited for that. And webinar today is brought to you again by State Farm and Safe Kids. And so we thank them for, for bringing this to us today. Wanna to make sure that you all know that there are some handouts for today's webinar. Um, it's the slides put together six slides on a page and in order to get that that handout just go to your chat if you're interested in that and the link to the handout is under the chat section of the zoom here so as a reminder again we want to let everybody know that only the person who is registered for the webinar and is logged in is going to get the credit for the webinar but if you are watching with friends, that's really great. And all you need to do is just quickly organize a in-person session. So we just gonna ask you just to designate a lead, get a sign-in sheet, and then you will add the CEU as an in-person session instead of a webinar when you go to your profile page to add that. So as always, we have our objectives for our webinars and so Today, we're gonna have as our first objective, identifying and reviewing the unique features of the Kids Embrace family of the combination seats, the high back boosters and the no back boosters. Then also discussing the unique ways that Kids Embrace character car seats can be used for educational purposes and also in some special needs situations. So we're gonna be covering that as well. Then providing information on the history of Kids Embrace and the licensing partners and introducing the newest members of the Kids Embrace family of their character car seats. So we have a lot of great, great things that will be happening today. So on the call today, we have some great speakers. First of all, we have Vincent. Vincent is the fourth in the picture there of their team. He is fourth from the left. Vincent is the Chief Operating Officer at Kids Embrace. He oversees their day-to-day -day operations and he is also one of the founders of Kids Embrace, and he has been with them from the beginning, starting out in a garage in California back in 2007. So we are very honored to have Vincent with us today. We also have Tony on the line. Tony became a technician in 1999 and an instructor in 2000, and Tony serves as the advocate, consultant, product trainer, and lead CPS instructor for several child seat manufacturers in the US and Canada. And in January of 2017, Tony joined the Kids Embrace team as their advocate relations manager and the lead CPS instructor for Kids Embrace. And Tony is fourth from the right on the picture that you're looking at. And then also on the line, we have Chad, who is second from the left. And Chad has been with Kids Embrace for six years as the Director of Engineering and Compliance. So if you have any engineering questions that come up today, we can sure shoot those towards Chad. Chad oversees all of the new product development of child restraints and the other juvenile products that they license. And he also manages the planning and royalty reports of licensing. So as you can see, we have a great group of speakers today, and we are thankful that they are with us today. So with that, I am going to turn it on over to you, Tony. Can you hear me? We sure can. Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon to everybody out there. Well, at least it's my afternoon where I'm at. Uh, Tony Jerish is my name. I know a lot of you guys out there. I'm really happy to be able to talk to you today, although I do rather enjoy talking to everybody in person like we do at the conferences. But unfortunately, things are different this year. So we're going to have, uh, we're going to tell you a lot of things about Kids Embrace that you haven't heard or seen me talk about at the conferences when I give my presentation. Next slide. This slide right here, I will always keep this slide in my presentation no matter what. I will begin my presentations with this slide. At Kids Embrace, we make safety fun, but we always feel that safety is always our first priority. 
If you look at that picture, that was a pretty serious crash that happened right there. In the past, sometimes I've said this was a little girl, but I've come to find out talking to Vince that this was a little boy in the crash. And this little boy in this crash walked away with hardly an injury. I think a little bruise on his cheek and that was about it. But the bottom line is this child walked away from this crash. Now, when you think about this, it doesn't matter what car seat is in that particular car or in the particular accident, as long as people like yourselves and me, we give the education so those car seats are put in the vehicle properly and the child is put in the seat properly so, they, so that they have the best chance to survive that crash. Now, when I'm at a conference, when I'm looking out at all the faces out there, I'll say, give yourselves a hand because you are real heroes out there every day helping keep, child, or, uh, helping keep children safe. And I really mean that. And I think I can hear a few claps going on someplace out there, but I do get a lot of claps when we're in person at the conferences, but I truly mean that. Next slide. Welcome to our family of child, of, of uh, Kids Embrace Child Character Seats. Now we've got princesses, the superheroes. We've got everyday heroes. You look at Chase, the police dog. You look at Sky, the helicopter pilot. You look at Marshall, the fire dog. We've also got characters that have come along through the years. In 218, we introduced the Black Panther. We introduced Wonder Woman and we introduced Batgirl. In 219, we introduced Buzz Lightyear. We also introduced Princess Tiana that you'll see over on the right hand side of your screen. Buzz Lightyear came to a lot of conferences with me over the last year and he was my partner. But as you're looking at this picture, front and center, there's Batman. I have not missed a conference in, in the years I've been with Safe Kids with Batman not accompanying me to the conference. So we're gonna to go to the next slide. Next slide, there we go. And you're gonna see Batman looking at us right in the, well, let's talk about some of the features. Now, normally I would read through these features and I'd be able to say, okay, I want you to come to the table and I will put hands on and show you exactly what these features are, where they are, what they do. But unfortunately we don't have that ability when we're doing a Zoom conference. So I'm gonna go through some of these features and then we're gonna go through some in a lot more detail as we go to the, as we go to the following slides. The bat, okay, our combination seats are approved forward facing for children between 22 and 65 pounds and 29 to 48 inches in height. Did I just say 22 pounds? Yes, I did. And of course, I'm gonna agree with all of you techs and instructors out there that if we have the opportunity, if we have the option, to put a 22 pound child rear facing, of course. We're gonna put a 22 pound child rear facing and we're gonna keep that child rear facing up to the highest weight that that seat would allow. But what if we don't have that option? At least you can see here that our combination seats have the option, they're rated to start at 22 pounds when you don't have any other option, especially rear facing. Now this seat right here does convert into a belt positioning booster from 30 to 100 pounds and 38 inches and 38 inches to 57 inches in height. Now, when you do convert into a booster seat, please take the harness off the seat because I've seen kids trying to sit on that seat, using it as a booster seat with the harness not taken off the seat and it does become a little bit uncomfortable. Our cover is machine washable general cycle. And I'm gonna go through this a little bit faster because we are going to uh, talk about some detail on some of these things I'm bringing up right now. We do have a two position crotch buckle to allow for growth. We have a three position adjustable head. That, that headrest that you're looking at will go up two more positions as the child grows. We have a one hand harness adjusting system. It is a comfortable contour. I've had young ladies that have been at the conferences and they've asked, can I sit in the seat? And we've allowed them to sit in the Batman seat and they've go, boy, this is comfortable. It does have a two position recline, which I'm gonna talk about in more detail and two cup holders, one on either side of the seat. Before we leave this slide, why don't you take a look at the cape right there. Now, this is something that was brought up to me by special needs instructors and special needs people that have come to the booth. And I'm sure that that cape wasn't put on for this specific reason. 
But they've come up to me and they said, do you realize that that cape can be very useful in certain special needs situations, like say an autistic child? They told me that when the cape is wrapped around a child like that, it helps them feel much more secure and it helps them stay much more uh, stable and much more so they're not jumping around in their car seat. So this is something you might want to think about. Now, speaking of the cape, if you want to, that does Velcro on and off. So you can take it off if you so desire to. But that's just one instance I just want to, and of course kids will bring it around themselves to keep it a little warm if it's in the winter too. But that's an instance that I really didn't know until the special needs people started to come up to me and started to uh, let me know about these instances where, where it could come in handy. Okay, let's go to the next slide now. And now we're gonna look at one of those things that we couldn't see on the other slide. You see that little piece of foam that's connected to the harness at the bottom of the seat? And no, that is not a piece of packing foam. And you are not supposed to take that off. It is part of the belt system right there. And would you believe I have had people ask me that question because they weren't sure what that is. That's why we're doing this. So you guys are gonna come to an understanding what a lot of these things are that are on the seats and what they mean and what they're there for. Those little pieces of padding are energy absorbing pads. They're constructed with EPP foam and they're designed specifically to help take the load off the harness in a crash. So please don't take them off, leave them there. If you get a chance, we want you to educate the parents too on what all these different parts are. So they have some idea what all these parts are. And I'll bet you there's some people out there that didn't really know that was at the bottom of the seat, but you do now. Next slide, please. Steph. Next slide, Stephanie. Ah, the two position crotch buckle. Now, you'll see right up on top, like we say in the classes when we teach, read the manual, read the manual. If you don't know the answer, just say read the manual and you might be right. Using the correct position. Well, it wasn't until I read our manual a few years ago, several years ago, that says if you look in that top line, if you can see it well enough, it says the crotch strap must be in the opening closest to, but not under the child. It doesn't say should be, it doesn't say recommended, it says must in big letters. So I want you to keep that in mind when you're securing the children, when you're positioning the children in the belt, that with our car seat in the manual, that says must be in the opening closest to but not under the child. Gee, why do we want to do this? Because we don't want a big gap there in the crotch of the child. We want to take up that gap so that they are as safe as possible in the event that a crash might occur. Now, you do have to lift up the padding on the bottom of the seat to get at uh, the crotch buckle to be able to change positions. It's not that hard. I've done it many, many times, but I want you guys to know where it's at. And, and it's very easy to follow in the manual when you look it up and you open up the manual. Next slide. <sighs> this is one of the things that when I'm up there at a conference, and I don't have these slides up there, I'll be saying, you need to come to the booth so I can show you what the recline foot is because you can't really see it. And I'll tell the participants out there, if you're listening to me, there's two questions I want you to ask me. And here's number one, the recline foot. Let's take a look at this recline foot. You really, you know, you have to turn the seat upside down. You manually have to change the position of that foot to create the recline. It's not that hard. There's a little bit of a handle right there that you can reach in, pull it down, and it snaps into place. And when I'm demonstrating, you'll hear it, boop, it'll snap into place. It does create a slight recline, not that much. And in the manual, if you look over at the manual again, it says, this car seat is equipped with a recline foot to provide additional comfort for your child. So here I'm thinking, hey, that's really cool additional comfort for your child. But again, I learned from special needs instructors and I learned from special needs people. They have come to me at the booth and at conferences and they've said to me, that bit of a recline in a forward facing seat does come in handy and it does help certain special needs kids, especially with breathing problems, to give them a little bit of a recline in the seat. And whenever they tell me those things, I say, thank you very much. 
And that's why when I learn this information, I want to pass it on to all of you technicians and instructors out there in reference to some of the uh, unique features that we're talking about. And as you can see in the next bullet, it can be used in both the harness seat mode and the booster seat mode, either one. And I'm going to talk a little bit about installation with the foot because I have noticed that when you install with the foot in the recline mode uh, using lap and shoulder belt, because that's basically what I use lap and shoulder belt, I do notice that there will be a small gap that might be created between the seat back and the vehicle back. Now, I have talked to my very good friend, engineer buddy Chad, and we've talked about this. And as far as we're concerned, that poses no problem to the installation of the seat if you have a little gap there as long as you can get the proper fit that we talk about in a car seat with no more than one inch of movement side to side and back and forth. As long as you can get that proper, that proper tightness and fit in the car seat, don't worry about that gap. That gap is not a problem. Not a problem whatsoever. But I want everybody to know that that's there and what it's for and what you can use it for. And I'm also talking to you guys again, man. Read the manual. Read the manual. Because you'd be surprised how many things you can find in that manual when you take a look at it. Next slide. And here's the number two thing that I talk about when I'm at a conference and I'm up there and we have the opportunity to go have a hands-on and really touch and feel on these seats, I will say, ask me, where's the highest harness slot on that seat? Because when the head is in the down position, it conceals that highest harness slot. When that head is lifted up, like you can see in this picture, and the black line is pointing, that is the highest harness slot on our seat. It does look a little bit different from the other two harness slots, and I will put my finger through that harness slot and show you where the plastic slot is on the seat itself. And yes, that is permissible. That has been crash tested. There's no problem with it whatsoever. People ask me that question. Not a problem whatsoever. It is not as high as maybe we would like it, but we had to design this into the seat afterwards. And people do like it because it does give a little bit more height. Now, as you, you know, like I said, you need to really lift it up to see where that's at. Um, I don't want anyone out there either to confuse that highest harness slot with the tether storage because tether storage is a little slot right next to that highest harness slot. And in seats that I've been out there in the field, I have seen people using that highest harness slot for tether storage because I don't think they really uh, knew what it was there for because they probably didn't read their manual. But the tether storage is right next to it. It shouldn't be confused. But this is one of those things where when you get a chance and you uh, touch and feel on these uh, seats, you get a much better idea of uh, where they're at and what they're for and everything else. Next slide. I always say boom when this comes out there because this was a boom to me when this came out. I loved and I still love this uh, change that we made on our combination seats. That orange webbing, I know of no other seat that has something as uh, bright as this that jumps out at you. Uh, specifically, uh, we, I should say Chad, and the team at Kids Embrace designed these orange harnesses to increase the awareness and help promote the tether use. And we know that we've been asking for that for years because we want people to use the tether. We want this to jump out at them. And that's exactly what this does. It jumps out at them. And when I am in front of a uh, group of people that I can actually talk to and wave to, and I will ask them, what do you think of this innovation that uh, Safe Kids came up with? And the, and the response has been absolutely positive. They like it, and I hope you guys do like it out there. Now, if you'll notice on this slide too, that using our, uh, our lower anchors, the maximum weight forward facing is 45 pounds. Uh, after 45 pounds, we definitely need to go to the seat belt. I just wanna point that out for you so you know that. 
And if you look at this picture with the head in an upright position, you can just about see with the up of the padding right there towards the top underneath the headrest, that's where those highest harness slots are. That's where you can find them if you need them because you know forward facing, we wanna keep those harness slots at or above the shoulders uh, of the child that's sitting in that seat. And like I said, this has been by far one of my favorite additions to our Kids Embrace family uh, in a long time. Next slide, please. Now we're gonna get into some high back booster seats. We make combination seats, we make high back booster seats. And I wanna point out a few things on the features on the high back booster seats. On line number two there, you see high back booster seat is designed for children. Now we talk about an age. Even in the book, in the, in the manual, it says designed for children a minimum of three years old, weighing 30 to 100 pounds and measuring 38 to 57 inches in height. You didn't hear me say a minimum of age before, but now I'm saying minimum of three years old for the high back booster. This seat does convert to a no back booster. It does come apart and it does become a backless booster. And that is meant for children a minimum of four years of age, weighing 40 to 100 pounds. As you see, there's been a little change here now. Went from three to four years old and it went from 30 to 40 pounds at the minimum weight, up to 100 pounds, measuring 40 to 57 inches in height. Of course, you can machine wash uh, on gentle cycle or seat cover. Now, another advantage when this seat does break apart, it does uh, help the storage of that seat a lot easier. It does help when you're uh, maybe putting the seat in the trunk because the child's not going to be in the seat. And I'm going to bring something up right now. If the child is not in this booster seat, make sure you buckle it in because you definitely don't want that seat whacking you in the back of the head when you slam on the brakes or something when the child's not in there. So if you are going to leave it in the car, definitely secure it. If you do have lower anchors or a top tether like you do when you convert the combination seat to high back booster, you can use them. And you can use those lower anchors and you can use the top tether to the highest weight of the booster seat, but you're only using it so that it's so that the seat is, the seat is secure and it doesn't whack you in the back of the head in case that seat goes flying around. Now here with this type of high back booster and there's no child in it, you take the seat belt, lock it in. Uh, okay, and uh, you will see that it does have a cup holder on both sides of the seat, and uh, it, but, uh, but it just comes with one cup holder, but you can put it on either side of the seat. And it does come with an adjustable strap when you convert this particular seat into a, no, into a, ba into a backless booster. I may say no back, that's just my terminology, but I'll try to say backless booster. Next slide. Ah, Frozen is now available. Now I know that's Elsa and I know that's Anna. I'm not sure which is which, but if you guys don't know, I'm sure you can ask one of your kids and they're gonna tell you who's who because this has become very popular. And then we have Olaf looking at you down below. Again, this booster seat is, uh, it, it can convert from a high back to a no back, to a backless booster. And this is our new Frozen characters that are coming out now. Next slide. Now we have backless boosters. And backless boosters, again, take a look. It is designed for children a minimum of four years old, weighing 40 to 100 pounds, 40 to 57 inches in height. And it does have a cup holder, one comes with, but you can put it on either side of the seat. I won't spend a lot of time talking about no back boosters. It does come with a strap that will adjust that shoulder harness for fit so it's off the neck and it's on the shoulder where it should be. Uh, next slide. And we have frozen again. Now we talked about Olaf down there at the bottom. We talked about Elsa, we talked about Anna. Now you're looking at Kristoff and you're looking at Sven, by the way, spends uh, Sven is the reindeer that I'm sure your kids will tell you who he is. I had to look online to find out exactly who Sven was. But they are our new design in backless boosters, and they're now available. Next. Next slide. Uh, now we get to a point here where I love pictures of kids, pictures having fun. Now you're going to start hearing a few of my stories, okay? Uh, 
store, I mean, look at that picture up on top. Uh, see that picture up on top where it says Marshall the Fire Dog? Where you see Marshall the Fire Dog up there? Alan Buchanan, extremely good friend of mine, and I'm sure you guys know him from all the conferences that you've gone to. He works for the Fire Marshal's office in uh, North Carolina. And he has told me now for many years, he has had a Marshall seat in his collection. And whenever they have the state conference in North Carolina at the Child Pasture Safety Booth, Marshall has accompanied him and been at that booth. And he said Marshall is like a magnet. Marshall brings the kids and brings in the families to that educational booth. And as we all know, once you have people to that booth, once you have them, you can talk to them about anything you want to talk to them about, but you want to encourage them to come over to the booth. But Alan tells me that uh, Marshall has been a huge benefit for his safety booth at the North Carolina State Conference. For me, in the state of Illinois, 20 years ago, I helped found the Child Pasture Safety Booth at the Chicago Auto Show, which is one of the largest in the country. Thousands of people come and attend that over about a two week period. And for about the last four, three, four, I don't wanna say four years, we have had Batman at that Child Pasture Safety Booth along with an, with an additional character. And we have had a much higher attendance at our booth because people walk through, sometimes they look over, they might stop, they might not stop. But the technicians that I work with up there at the Chicago Auto Show that have attended this booth, they tell me that it has increased the foot traffic at that educational booth four to five times over the last three years or so. I would highly recommend that you consider a character seat. If you do any educational booths, fairs, anything like that, to have one for a display because they are like a magnet to bring people in because they walk by, they want to see what it is. They're encouraged, you know, they, uh, maybe they haven't seen one before, but it brings them in so you can educate them and you can talk to them. My good buddy, Paul, who you saw a picture of, Paul Albright, he always tells me the story about how he bought a Batman seat for his grandson. And when they went to the store the first time was a Walmart store. When they were about to get out of the car, his grandson turned to the mom and said, Mom, can I take Batman in the store with me? The kids become attached to these seats, and that's what we're looking for. I don't want to have anybody to have to do what people asked me to do years ago when I was a still police officer and I was in uniform. I had parents come up to me, and basically what they were saying to me, would you come over and maybe yell at my kid a little bit? Because he won't stay in his seat. But if he hears it from you then maybe he'll stay in his car seat. And I like look at him and I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. So the kids look at my police uniform and then they're not going to like police officers for the rest of their lives. No, you, the parents are the ones that have to discipline your kids and make them sit in cars. And this right here, these kids become attached to these seats. They want to sit in these seats. So basically we are making safety fun but we are making the kids safe. That's the point I'm trying to make to you guys too with some of these uh, uh, pictures and stories. Next slide. The little girl in the seat, smiling at you in that Batman seat. That is Chad's beautiful daughter. And I have used this picture for a long time too. People ask, can you use the Batman seat? on an airplane, and there's your proof right there. Yes, you can. And you can see she's sitting next to the window over there, and she looks like she's got plenty of room to sit in this Batman seat, very comfortable, and she's very happy over here, over there. Then we switch over to the next photo. And this is, my, well, I keep saying my favorite photo, my favorite photo. This has to be up in the top two or three. I look at those kids when I first saw this picture, and look at the smiles on their faces. They're sitting under a Christmas tree and they're sitting in those seats, the two girls in Minnie Mouse seats and the boy in a Batman seat. And there's no doubt in my mind that these kids right here think, ooh, Santa brought me a toy for Christmas. But we know because of what we do, this isn't a toy. This is something that they're gonna use, that they're gonna wanna use, that they'll take with them, that they will use in the car and they'll wanna stay in the seat. And it will keep them safe in the car if you, I, and all the technicians and instructors out there educate the parents properly, and all these seats are installed and the children put in the seats properly, we're going to have that really nice outcome like we saw at the beginning of this presentation. 
But those kids are happy. They're having a great Christmas. They're going to take their toy and they're going to use it every day in their car and it's going to keep them safe. Uh, next slide. Okay, this is my final slide. I'm not exactly sure where I am on the time, but I, there's a few things I need to talk about on this slide right here. What you're looking at at that picture is a picture of our first graduating class out at, in California for our Kids Embrace uh, team. And these are, you know, and uh, this is part of our team. This is our first graduating class. You can see Vince, Chad, and Rick on the one side and the far side is our warehouse manager. Uh, Katie, right in front of Paul Albright, is one of the administrative assistants, and Angie was, was an administrative assistant, too. Take a look at Katie's picture, because I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to be bringing up her name in a minute, too. One of the things that I really love about the Kids Embrace team and the management of Kids Embrace is that they are very, they think it's very extremely important that all of our team become child passenger safety technicians and remain child passenger safety technicians. We were planning on having another class out there this past year in 2000 and, or we were having a class in 2020. We were planning on that earlier this year, but look what happened. All of our plans, because there are some employees that we'd like to train and our plans got a little bit delayed because of the virus out there. But I just want to let you guys know that Kids Embrace is extremely, uh, it's extremely important to them to keep the education up to be able to answer people's questions when they call in uh, as child passenger safety technicians. Now, if we look over at the contact side, about the third box down, you're gonna see that name, KDJ at kidsembrace.com. We have changed our, we do have a, a CPS discount for technicians and instructors, and it's 25% off our products for the technicians and instructors because we do wanna give back to you guys that are doing such a great job out there trying to keep all of our children safe. The process has changed just a little bit. If you wish to order one of our seats using our tech discount, you see Katie's contact information right there. You contact Katie, most likely by email, best chance, you know, the best a way to do it. And you will work with Katie and she will make sure that you get your order properly and you get your discount. Uh, and that works for our, our combination seats, our high back booster seats, and our no back booster seats. And you see my name right at the top of that sheet right there. I mean, at the top of this page, that is my contact information. That is my cell phone. You have permission to jot down my cell phone, take it if you have any questions about Kids Embrace and you need them answered, please get a hold of me. I'll be more than happy to try to, if I don't know the answer, I will find the answer for me. If we were at a conference, I'd probably joke around and say, uh, call Paul first if it's two o'clock in the morning. Two, one of them is, can you use Kids Embrace car seats with an inflatable seat belt? And the answer is no. We have not tested or a crash tested using an inflatable seat belt. And, I, and uh, the second thing that comes up is, what is the expiration date on our seats? Kids Embrace seats have a seven year expiration date. And I hope that I got all my information in. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sorry I had to talk so much. I'm sorry I had to listen to me. But I do enjoy talking to you guys and I miss uh, being there in person so that we can uh, touch and feel on the seats like at the booth. Uh, okay. Stephanie. Thank you, Tony. So we're going to move, we're going to save our question, questions till the end, um, but we're going to move on to Vincent and let Vincent take it from here. So Vincent, if you want to go ahead, um, we'll let you move on. Thank you, Stephanie, and uh, well done, Tony, as always. Hi, everybody. Thanks for making time for us. We really appreciate it. Um, Tony did a great job explaining kind of Kids Embrace and, and who we are and what we do. Um, we do like to say we're much more than a product company. We have changed the way we think consumers discover and buy baby gear. And, and we mean that when we say that, um, you know, we started with the car seats. We have some other products now that most of you probably have seen, such as high chairs and stroller tricycles and things that really help um, People get familiar with our product prior to buying one of our harness booster seats, 
um, later in the child's life. Um, uh, it also does help a lot of parents when they're kind of starting out, uh, they have still an, an affinity for licensing, especially now with some of the millennial parents. So they are, you know, interested in maybe buying something that they feel close to. So that's been very helpful and, and kind of just um, keeping kids embraced in, in the minds of, uh, of, you know, new parents. And then of course, as the kids get older and uh, we have to get them into the car seats, which we know getting them in and keeping them in can be sometimes difficult. The characters have really made a difference. And as Tony touched on, um, a lot of parents and a lot of caregivers that we work with that do have children with special needs, especially, um, have made uh, us very aware of just how much a difference the seats have made and how helpful they have been. So uh, we're very proud of that, of course. Uh, the History of Kids Embrace it is a great story. We did start out of a garage here in Sherman Oaks um, 13 years ago, which seems like a lifetime ago. I was one of the founders and one of the very, uh, you know, first involved in, in getting this moving. And um, as you probably all can imagine, licensing is such a tough, um, tough thing to get started. And uh, you really have to follow and be, you know, hold into a lot of their rules and regulations and restrictions, but the, the payoff and reward can be um, immense. You know, children really do love licensed products. I mean, especially through COVID, as sure as everybody has seen them. I have a five-year-old daughter. Um, it's been such, you know, so much going on in the home and having, you know, you know Disney available and things like that of that nature does keep her so entertained and, and also educational, which is great and helps us kind of use that to bridge the gap. Um, but we did have a interesting start. Some of these dates actually, um, they, they have start dates, but they took a lot longer to get to fruition, as you can imagine, because it just doesn't happen overnight. There's so much that goes into it. But uh, we just started out in 2007. We got our first license with Nickelodeon, but we really didn't get um, into production and selling until 2010. Um, crash testing and all the license approvals took that long to get going. Um, and once we got moving forward, uh, we still had to convince a lot of the buyers and a lot of parents that, you know, you could have a fun car seat that's also just as safe as any other on the market that meets all the same certifications of an FMBSS 213 certified car seat, and they didn't have to be mutually exclusive, right? That's always something that's, um, you know, how could this be so safe and, and be fun? Um, we sometimes notice, I mean, I have a five-year-old daughter who uses it. She's so content in the seat. Um, I'm less distracted as a driver. She's very comfortable. So I think that sometimes it does add to that, which is very helpful. Um, we, we did get uh, the Batman car seat. Actually, it was in 300 Babies R Us and Toys R Us stores from 2012 until 2018 when they went bankrupt. So he had a really nice run. And that really helped the brand move forward because as more parents bought it and saw the, the on the shelf of TRU, it really gave us a lot of credibility, a lot of great reviews. Um, and that really did help propel us on the, e on the e commerce platform and allowed it to expand it to other characters. So that's kind of you know, the timeline. You can see where we, we picked up Marvel in 2015, which has been fantastic for us as a brand. And of course, we've now expanded to other juvenile products to help kind of round out our product line. Um, and kind of have a, uh, a nice uh, path for the child from, you know, as early as birth through all the way up to their last car seat in a Novak booster with Kids Embrace. And of course, we work with some of the biggest global license partners in the world. Uh, you know, you know, Viacom and Nickelodeon, um, been fantastic work with Paw Patrol, as Tony mentioned, been a huge hit for us and a huge hit for the kids. Um, there's that show has a lot of educational um, value to it and the kids really do uh, draw well to the Paw Patrol seats and, and the hero characters they are. Um, of course, Warner Brothers and DC Comics, iconic uh, brands like Marvel and Disney. And uh, as Tony touched on, we did pick up Frozen this year to kind of round out more of our female and the girl side of the line. And it's just been a huge hit. Um, the movies, of course, have done really well <laughs> and the characters and um, the no back and high back booster have been our best seller this year once they kind of entered into our uh, lineup so toy story the buzz lightyear seat has been fantastic for us and the kids really seem to gravitate towards that that's a really interesting one because it is very much a unisex type product and boys and girls gender neutral 
And um, so that's been a really fun item. Coming up this year, probably maybe now 2021, because things have got pushed back with COVID and all that you guys are probably going through, as, as are we. Delays are now part of the day, daily fabric. Um, Star Wars might make an appearance here in 2020, but late, possibly fourth quarter. And then we are going to be working with Nintendo um, and Entertainment One, who does PJ Masks and Peppa Pig. And we are in discussions with Major League Baseball right now to bring some of the of their iconic teams and, and logos and things like that of that nature to our uh, car seats and some other products as well. So this is a great slide here because it does give you some idea of the other products that Kids Embrace makes. We, and as I mentioned, they do help kind of give parents um, a good feeling about Kids Embrace before they move to buying a forward-facing car seat because we don't make an infant car seat. Um, and uh, so because of that, having some of these products in your home prior to, again, gives some comfortable uh, and assurances that we do make very good products. We, we are very, our quality is at top level. We've always went above and beyond to meet and exceed all requirements. The stroller tricycle there above is one of our best selling items. It's a 10 months to five years old tricycle. It has a three point harness. Um, it has a removable parent handle. It has a click on and off wheels for super easy use. It has a locking front wheel so that the child can just be pushed without pushing the, the pedal and the parent has free reign. It even has a drop down pedal for the child's a little bit younger and they can use that. So that's been a really amazing item. And then it fully, the, the canopy fully comes off and becomes just a tricycle. So it, it really is a great product, especially if you have multiple kids with different ages, they can also use it at the same time in, in different spots. So it's been great. The baby carrier is another item which has really worked well for us, especially the millennial parents. And, you know, really more than anything, a lot of dads who sometimes are not as eager to put on a baby carrier, we've seen them be very welcoming to the Batman one especially, and, um, and moms too. And so that's been a great product. Um, we have the car seat accessories, the vehicle mat, and the organizer. Um, those have been crash tested with our seats, so that's uh, good to know. And we, of course, made sure that we would only provide or, or have aftermarket parts that were te crash tested with our products. Um, we have a great Batman on board window, sh window shade, which keeps the sun out of the child's eyes when they're in a car ride. And then, of course, round out our products with the uh, high chair, our stroller, and our harness blades. The high chair actually is the best selling or highest rated high chair on Amazon. It's, you know, it's got nearly 400 five star reviews. It's a very affordable high chair that has six up and down positions and six recline uh, positions. And so again, it does really um, help us, you know, ensure the parents and the caretakers and caregivers that we make a very great product and that helps them make a good decision when they're ready to buy the car seat as well. Of course, Tony showed you some of the photos of all the characters together. We have the combination harness booster available in 22 SKUs. It's, uh, it's a nice family that's grown and it really does help to have that many characters because it's, it's amazing how many people really do want to have a different option for each child and, and how children are very uh, particular about some of the characters they love. Um, the 401 stroller track comes in five SKUs. The high chairs available in two. That may be changing. Disney has asked us to produce some high chairs so that may be happening sometime soon. The Novak Booster, which, you know, we love that product. Actually, the, the Avengers one that Tony showed before was just featured in a Bye Bye Baby ad, which was fantastic. It's a really great item as a last car seat for the child as a negotiation tactic, especially when they really want to think they're too big for a seat like that. We've seen a lot of parents find a way to kind of use those logos and characters to get them to you choose, you choose your seat, um, the kids and race item, but you're going to have to still use a car booster seat. And that's really been a great, you know, add on for them. The high back booster is available. And actually now it's um, four SKUs with Frozen. And that's going to be one that's going to be available for Star Wars as well. So that's going to be coming down the end of this year. And the baby carrier, we have available in three SKUs. You guys probably know Jamie Grayson. Formerly the baby guy, now just Jamie Grayson on Instagram and social media. I was at the ABC show last year. Um, 
you know, we, 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 we realize how big a problem Carson installation is. I mean, we all talk about it all the time. And one thing we've noticed, and I'm sure Tony, again, touches on when he's at conferences and people do agree, on social media or just in general, when people see our car seats, they do kind of give it a longer look just because of what it does look like. And sometimes you can grab their attention for a little longer. So we do when we do grab their attention, prior to making this big seat even, we would use that time to really try to make sure people understood, you know, how important proper installation is, right? That, that picture Tony showed earlier of that child in that crash, you know, that's a little boy named Logan. Um, the mom was Julie Stewart. Her mom was in a wheelchair for, I think it was six months. Um, and as she said, Logan only had a bruise. But again, car seats are designed to perform um, and meet the standard. All, all car seats are, but if you don't install properly, it's not going to do its job. So the mom, again, was a superhero there. She did install that car seat. And that's why Logan now is, you know, at uh, nine years old, running around, having a blast, and only had a bruise on his cheek. But when we get people's attention, we always tell them, not just about our seat, that we, we have their attention, we try to do what we can as a PSA to say, hey, whatever seat you have, please go make sure it's installed correctly. You know, follow these tips, go to savekids.org, ask questions. So in seeing how responsive people were to that, we thought it would be fun to make a giant Batman car seat. Um, great for trade shows, great to call attention to the huge problem of proper insulation by having a huge car seat. Um, that picture on the right there is at a Los Angeles store called Curacao. Um, we do car seat checks with them, or we, at least we did prior to COVID. We did, I think, four last year, and we do them at their local stores. And part of the, the way we get a lot of people to come is, hey, you come take a picture with the Batman car seat after you get the car seat installed. Uh, or you do a, a proper installation, and then we share on social media. So it has really brought a lot of attention and helped us kind of deliver more messaging on how safe, how, how vital and important proper car seat installation is. The Cape Crusader, this is our newest addition, or he will be the newest addition to the family coming out by the end of this year. Um, our traditional Batman character, which is the core one that you saw in the, one of the first few slides, the iconic, you know, blue and, and gray. That's, uh, it's been around for us for a while. It's done really well. Um, but a lot of our Marvel characters are really, as we've gotten better at bringing characters to life, the artwork has changed. And so as we evolve, we really want to make sure these characters do look and, and feel like the real thing. So this is one where we worked really closely with Warner Brothers. There's a new movie coming out in 2021, which is called The Batman with Robert Pattinson, and this is kind of kind of leaning more towards that design. So uh, this is gonna be a refresh that's gonna take place, and again, this is gonna be something that helps us keep children in their car seats longer. It's really much easier to keep a child in a harness booster seat. We've had parents tell us all the time, they've been able to negotiate with their children to keep them in a harness booster seat longer when they're able to kind of choose something or enjoy something they like. My daughter actually sits in a Batman seat. She loves it. Um, she, uh, she doesn't want to sit in a seat, Batman all the time. And it makes our life so much easier. We, we really don't struggle to get her in the seat and she's always very comfortable in it. So we hope that other parents have the same, you know, results and the same feeling about our products. And of course that's our team. So, I mean, we really do appreciate you guys taking the time today to let us walk you through what Kids Embrace does, who we are, and what we're trying to do with our product. You know, we really respect all the other car seat manufacturers out there. We collaborate often with them. We don't see them as you know uh, enemies or adversaries. We see them as partners, and we want to help make uh, sure that every child is as safe as possible. So we've really made an effort to do that. And, um, and together, I think we're making a difference. And of course, with you guys out there doing what you do, that's really the most important part. So really, thank you so much for making time for us today. And I think we probably have some questions that we need to answer. You bet. So thank you guys. And I'm gonna turn it over to you, Carrie, for questions that may have come in. Sounds great. Um, we do have questions. Um, the first one, um, Melissa, she wants to know, does Kids Embrace allow a gap when the vehicle headrest restraint is not able to be removed and it pushes the seat forward? So in this case here, um, the, I mean, the best answer is as long as you can't move it more than the one inch side to side. If you're installing it and you can still move that seat side to side more than one inch, then no. Okay. Um, 
when cleaning the seat, do the energy foams, does the, does the energy foam come out and do you have to put it back in again when you're readjusting the straps back into the regular position? Okay. I believe no, but I'd like to make sure, uh, Chad, I don't think our foam uh, comes out, does it? He's on mute, Chad, possibly. You do not have to remove the foam. So you can remove the harness, of course, from the pad and keep the bottom foam and the harness in place and still wash the car seat and then reinstall the pad by weaving back through the harness. But yeah, we would not suggest removing the harness and the dampeners from the seat to clean it. Okay, um, Luke has a follow-up question. He removed the harness uh, a few weeks ago from a Batman seat and he had some problems removing it because of the foam. And do you have any tips on being able to better remove that harness? So if you removed it entire, like remove the entire harness from the seat and then you're gonna reinstall the harness. As we said, if you're gonna clean it, the, the, the advice we would give is don't remove those bottom pieces just remove the, unweave the harness so you can take the pad off. Um, that's the best thing to do. But if you did take it off and have to weave back in, you do have to do it gently so that you don't break the foam. In the event that you do, you can contact us and we would supply you with some um, spare parts and an extra foam to make sure you can install, reinstall properly. Okay. We had a lot of techs that had questions about having a minimum age uh, for the booster seat and if there's any chance yeah. getting it increased from three. Chad, you want to take that one? Because we so are yeah, so we've been uh, we joined at JPMA recently, and as an industry, it seems like they're moving forward with the forty pounds um, and four years old. So we are going to be making the switch over um, where we had make we have made the switch over to to the four years. Um, it is one of those things where um, you do have a wide spectrum of of ages and sizes, and then the past three years has always worked. Um, but again, mo going forward, it will be four years for the, uh, the booster mode. Four and years actually, is 40 pounds, and that's starting right. August. Not to interrupt. Starting this August, all seats produced, all booster seats will have the 40 pounds and the four years old. So the question is a great one. I saw several of them ask, uh, several people asked the same question as you mentioned. Um, and actually, Kate wanted to know if that change was going to be retroactive. So. In our case, no. However, if somebody feels that, I mean, they need a label or they need to, uh, to they want to lower it to the four years, then, I mean, we can definitely send them a label or, or if that makes them happier. Um, but no, right now it's going forward, so. Okay. But I will say though, just to jump in there, on the marketing side, when we do do any kind of new marketing, we will be making those uh, statements about 40 pounds and four years old. So that will, in a sense, retroactively be out there and, and, and the messaging. But to Chad's point, we won't be reworking any of the seats that are out there on the market, but we will be messaging and making sure people understand that we're suggesting those ages and those weights. Okay, great. Um, Amber says, you know, what if you have a five-year-old who weighs 30 pounds, but their seated height is tall and their shoulders are above the top harness slot? What options do they have? Tom, in this, what do you want to take that one? Or in this case here, in this case here, they had they'd have just they'd have to switch over to belt positioning. Right, that's um, what I was going to say too. She has to go to belt positioning, belt positioning mode under the circumstances that she explained. Okay, um, and we do have a request. Um, Jenna doesn't want bleeding knuckles anymore, and so she's requested if you can make the belt path. Is there any way to make it a little bit larger? I've heard that one before. Uh, go ahead, Jenna. We have. Uh, Ah, uh, that's a great question. We would love to, um, we, we are always looking to kind of improve our product and at some point we might change the design of the seat and we would have the ability then possibly to, to make that a little bit wider. It is something that, yeah, I found some creative ways to get the, um, the latch or the, the seat belt through without having to get that my hands as, up. but we, we've heard that um, we, we do take every suggestion um, to heart we want to make sure we have as perfect a product as possible. So that's something that if we do make a change to the current design that is on the top of the list to also change or improve, I should say. We also had a bunch of people asking if you were planning on expanding your line to either a convertible seat um, or a rear facing only seat. 
Dad? We, we have had those discussions. Uh, we're facing only, we're not really thinking about that just yet, but well, we, we definitely are. Um, we, we've had so many parents that really do love what we bring to the market and they wish that we had something available for them. So when the child can rear face longer in a convertible seat, but they still already and they're a little bit older and they would be maybe into something that's a uh, licensing or have licensing or character. So we're talking about that now, uh, again, and Q or things that we were hoping to do sooner have been pushed back because of COVID, but it is on our radar. It's something that we're being, that's being discussed. And I would say that it's very likely sometime in the future that you would see a kids in race convertible seat. All right. Um, when, con when using the combo seat as a booster seat, so you've taken the harness out, um, can you still use the latch and tether to secure the seat in place while you use the seatbelt to secure the child in place? That's from Diana. Uh, yes, I'll take that one. Once you've turned our combination seat into a booster seat, into a high back booster seat, yes, you may use lower anchors and you may use tether. Now, I want everybody to understand and the, and, and the lady asking the question to understand that you do not have to use that one inch of movement back and forth. What you're using the tether and uh, the lower anchors for in that circumstance is you just don't want that seat, if the child is not in it, if the seat isn't being used, to fly around the car and hit you in the back of the head. So that's what the tether and that's what the lower anchors are for. And you can use it through the whole weight limit of the child as you're using it as a booster seat. Does that help, Carrie? And real fast, I'm gonna add on to that. Just make sure that it does not, um, if you're using the latch, it doesn't interfere with the seat belt or doesn't change the belt routing of the, the vehicle seat belt as well as it that you also want to make sure that your seat is not off center of the seat belt so you want to make sure that if it, like tony said it doesn't have to be tight it just has to be a fix so it's not as so you're fine there so thank you chad okay um we do have time for just one or two more questions um denise, denise wants to know if there's overhang allowed when the combo seat is using the harness and then what about in booster mode As far, okay, as far as I know, and I'll let Chad follow up on this too, uh, we, we need 80% of the cars, of the vehicle, of the car on the vehicle seat. Um, just like it says uh, in the curriculum, like we learned in the curriculum, but I'm going to let Chad follow up on this just to make sure. So yes, I agree with what Tony said. And, and I guess the main thing is, is if you as techs ever have any questions um, when you're in the field or whatever, if you get a hold of Tony, I mean, we'll right. be able to respond to you quickly um, with any questions, so. All right, well, I know we had a lot of questions. We couldn't ask them all. So if your question wasn't asked or it wasn't asked exactly the way you intended, you have been given their contact information. And as you know, we always encourage you to contact the manufacturer if you have a question. So I am turning it back over to you, Stephanie. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for a great webinar and just want to see if uh, Vincent, Tony or Chad, if you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with us before we say goodbye. Just one fast thing. I mentioned Paul Albright's name and he is kind of a consultant with us. So if any of your technicians or instructors know him personally out there, he will be able to answer questions for us also. Okay. Yeah, and I'd just like to add again, thank you all for, for making the time and doing what you do. We, we really do appreciate the community and all the, the, the help you provide for, for everyone. So it's been great. And we, um, you know, right now, anything that we can do to help um, with anybody's children and their grandchildren, anybody that needs assistance with products or like Tony said earlier, discounts. We, we are limited with inventory due to COVID. We're trying to get um, our supply back in because our demand has been tremendously high right now through this period. But um, as Gary and Stephanie mentioned, contact us directly if you need and if anything we can do to provide any assistance, uh, we're happy to do so. And we hope everybody stays safe during this time and we look forward to possibly seeing you all in the future in person. That sounds great. Well, again, thank you all very much. And thank you to all the technicians that joined us today. And just a reminder that a survey is gonna show up when the webinar is over 
And then also later on, a confirmation email is coming your way with the event ID on it for a CEU for today. If you don't get it, please check your spam. And if it's not there, you see my email there, just go ahead and email me and I will um, confirm your attendance and send you an email. So with that, again, we just want to thank everybody for your time this afternoon, and we hope everyone has a great and safe day. Take care. Thank you, Stephanie.